Hi, everyone. This is Dalida Jafar. I'm um, coach, speaker, and trainer. I'm specialized in leadership and organizational psychology. And today, I'm really excited to uh, interview Jeremy Master. Jeremy is a a dear friend of mine, and he is also an Apple steward. He really understands how to make complicated stuff simple. Jeremy works, uh, Jeremy's work covers everything from growing membership, building partnerships, to designing sales processes that work. On the top of that, he's an expert in Medicare and health insurance. Together with his wife, Jeremy helps people and businesses get clear on their benefits and make this decisions that they can feel good about. A couple of days ago, I was having lunch with Jeremy and Laura, his wife, and we started to discuss AI in this world, AI for employees, for employers. And this is when the idea came to get into this podcast to talk more about how AI is affecting the workplace And what is the future with AI, employee motivations? What do employers need to do? And a lot more will be discussed today. Hi, Hi, Jeremy. How are you doing? I am doing wonderfully, as always, Uh, as long as you're here, Lita. It's it's a better day. It's a better day. (laughs) Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much for making this happen. So, uh, yeah, how how do we get started? And, you know... uh, First of all, when I read the introduction, you've been always talking Opolis, Opolis, Opolis. So what's this Opolis? What specifically? I know it has, you have a great job and I want to know more about it. So maybe as an introduction, I've, uh, you know, most of my life I've worked in some degree of sales. Um, I got into health insurance. And I'm very passionate about helping educate people and making health insurance more accessible. It is very difficult to understand. It can be very costly to make mistakes, both for one's health, but also obviously for uh, the checkbook as well. So my wife and I work in that capacity, and we mostly help people with Medicare, which is retirees, older folks, maybe people with disability. I started researching what we do every year is we 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 just look and we'd be like what what else is available what don't we know and how do we help people and every year we found a whole lot of nothing because there's not much available right i mean it, people are using it or it's not there it doesn't work so i ran across opolis and what opolis does is fairly ingenious we help self-employed folks so people like you people like me because if when we're at a big business who gets the best benefits? It's like Google, yep. Apple, IBM, right? These people get great benefits, but they're trapped in a job. And when they go off on their own, they become a contractor like you, and they become more and more successful. They have to piecemeal their health care, their retirement. They have to figure out, do I need an LLC? What's an S Corp? They have to try to piece all of it together. So we help them piece all of it together. We get them the benefits of being at Google, but also the benefits of being self-employed so they can work for themselves, get the write-offs. So I found this and it's been, it's just been a blast ever since. I I, I was actually brought on for uh, in a number of capacities, but in startup land, you get to work on everything. So we're better and worse. <laughs> okay. Here I am. <clears throat> so it's, it's really interesting because right now I'm getting the perception of an employee working in a certain position, which is considered, I know your schedule is flexible, but it's eight to five, the the regular calling, we we call it eight to five job. But at the Mm -hmm. same time, you have this mindset of being a partner in this company, looking for ways to improve it, to to engage employees more and how you uh, are supporting this company also to grow since it's a startup and as someone who's self-employed, I really believe there is a great need for this company uh, in in the American market. But looking at your at your perception as an employee, what do you think is really important for employees to feel valued va- valued and engaged within this company or any other company? Yeah, it's a great question. 
I think whether you're an employee or whether you're a contractor, you get people bought in through incentives, through feelings of ownership, through feelings of worth. We've all heard stories. No one listening to this dreams of going to go work at Walmart as a retail clerk. And there's a reason for that, right? People genuinely don't have a good time there. People don't get paid very much. But pay, obviously, is secondary. And you can see this all over the place. Look at high-powered, very, uh, very well-paid um, traders, for instance. Mm -hmm. They're making 300, 400, 500,000. And they're asking for less money so that they can have some free time. Yes. Right? But when you're working with, you know, under the umbrella of a company, I think there are a lot of things that that help us. And you would know better than I would, you know, what motivates a lot of these people because you hear from them all the time. They want to be, they want to feel heard. I want to feel heard. You want to feel heard. Even if I don't act on it, it's better that I hear what you need. Even if I don't, uh, you know, and, and it is important that I act on some of it because you're going to be the expert. I think maybe one of the things that's interesting to me is the idea of revolving leadership. I think in many environments, employees don't feel like leaders. Yeah. And sometimes owners do feel like leaders when they need to, you know, follow a little bit. But there's going to be windows of expertise where you defer to me and I defer back to you. Um, so I think I think those things can be really, really valuable. But what what keeps people uh, you know, motivated? Um, they want to feel like they're getting somewhere. They want to have hope for the future, right? Feel like they're going to be taken care of. Uh, so benefits, we hear this all the time over at Opolis, need healthcare, need access to these things that I just can't get individually. So when you get employees benefits, that's valuable. When you listen to employees, that's valuable. When you provide them training and feedback, it's really, really valuable. Uh, maybe that's a good place to start. But what, what are the things that you see most often here? I, I know you do a lot of this training. You work with employees all the time. Where do you struggle? Where, where do they struggle? Um basically it's it's all of the above everything you mentioned pay is not it's something really important and it's the first need if you look at at the needs of a human being first of thing is to be able to provide for their house to provide for mm. grocery for raising this is really important but it doesn't stop there and i'm seeing a trend of people who are willing to switch to different job where they have more life balance, they feel more appreciated, they are feeling there's a growth, even though there's less pay. So yeah. employees right now, employers right now need to consider that, okay, uh, it's not enough to pay them, especially now uh, there is a lot of trend with leadership to switch towards contractual contractual positions so they can give less benefits to people. But where's the loyalty? How loyal the employee will be the, to the company if they don't feel you are doing this enough to protect them and to take care of them? I think, I think that's, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No. Uh, I think that's a really valuable point. You're saying that, you know, especially with this, this big ongoing trend to switch to contracting, we're seeing a lot of people feeling less loyalty because they're uncertain about their future, right? Mm -hmm. And they I... are they are jumping to the next big things. I've been in mm -hmm. jobs before where I used to work with employer and I was constantly looking for something else, even though the pay was good, but I didn't feel this stability, this safety, this appreciation. And I didn't feel the employer is providing anything other than this paycheck, which at the end is directly towards, okay, you do this, you get paid this much, but there is nothing else provided where I was working also with employers who I never thought of looking for something else because I'm satisfied. My needs right. are financially and also as feeling of accomplishments and stability and also safety within this company. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hearing this is a lot like, this is a lot like marriage, right? I've spoken to a lot of people in this, in this country, right? Where marriage has certain benefits or costs depending mm -hmm. on your financial situation. And sometimes I might, you know, love this person I'm with, but I might not choose to marry them. Sometimes it might not be ready to marry them, but I want to marry them just to get their benefits. 
this sometimes happens. And maybe what you're talking about is a little bit like this. In work, we're, we're looking for, for both of these worlds. And by trying to find good stability, I, th I think we're, we're, we're negotiating what those, those relationships mean, contracting versus employment versus, versus anything else. But I, I like that you're saying that, that, that people are looking for it. I think for loyalty though, to build on that, we want to look at what people are really loyal to. If a contracting position, if I feel comfortable working with you, Delita, in a contract position, and you say, "Hey, I got to pay. Here's a contracting position. You know, I'm going to give you an annual contract. We're working great together, and I can expect that's probably going to go on. That might be fine. But if you treat me well, then I may be loyal to you. The company be damned, right? People yeah. aren't loyal to companies. They're loyal to other people. So maybe that's an answer, regardless of the of the type of entity we're talking about. Boy, that was a little long-winded. <laughs> yeah, I, I love what you said because yes, I my direct uh, connection with the company is my manager. And mm. if I didn't feel this loyalty, I didn't feel this connection and good relationship with my manager. I I don't know what's the headquarters, where's the, maybe mm. The headquarters is in a different state, which I never visit. But my perception, or when I think of this company, I think of with about this person who is my manager, who is providing help and support and help me grow, or right. he's limiting my growth and making me feel more transactional. Give this time, I'll give you this. And when this comes, there this is when you feel there's this engagement in, in, in the employee's presence at work. Mm. Now, another factor I was uh, noticing, I'm really noticing is the fear of the changing marketplace. The demands of jobs right now with all those technological advances, with AI, uh, many people feel Am I, is my job safe? And I know you you are really passionate towards this mm. AI uh, like advancement and all what's being going on, which is yeah. you're loving it, you're passionate about it, but I'm hearing a lot of people who have this big fear about yeah. AI. Can you tell us about AI? How are employers or employees using it? Like, What's your idea? Yeah. Um, gosh, there's a lot to say there. Uh, so any big introduction of technology is going to come with changes. We've seen that historically, and in, in, uh, YouTube has a thousand videos on this already. But on the ground, what you're seeing is a lot of people that are unsure of what's happening. And there's, there's a separation between the haves and have-nots. We have people that are still answering the phone traditionally, writing emails traditionally, doing all of these things. Some of them have barely adjusted to Google and Googling answers. Mm -hmm. And now we have this, you know, the generative AI project you know, at our tips, ChatGBT, that can do so much more than that. So imagine that person, and then imagine the people that are using all of these, that, that, that one person is running a business that should have taken five, 10, 15 people because of all of the automation that's now in place. So I think the question first can be kind of answered. Ignore AI as a buzz term and talk about automation. Talk about efficiency improvements. What can we do in our lives? Should I be worried as an employee or should I be worried as a contractor? In some cases, I think maybe we should. And we should look about what our job over to, I'll give you an example. If I am a frontline I worked for a, a, a television company at one point, right? It was a direct TV type of a thing. And we had frontline workers and they would be customer service reps that would just be typing to people. Mm -hmm. A lot of those basic questions are now being answered by generative AI bots. Yes. So just know if you're in that position and you're ask, answering basic questions, Maybe you're on the front line of kind of being, you know, replaced. Well, what might your job morph into? Are we still going to need more complex answers? Probably. 
is AI there yet? Where are the limits and where is it not there at? This type of conversation, AI cannot do very well because it cannot recognize my face, know that I'm smiling and enjoying this. I'm excited or I'm not. So possibly you're going to want to move out of you know, that type of chatting, or you would need high levels of specialization that the bots can't quite capture yet. Yes. Right. So maybe that's kind of an answer. But in the future, what is this going to look like? You know, everyone's a little up in the air on how fast it moves. But many of our high paid professionals jobs are going out. Contract lawyers, they're on the table. We don't need contract lawyers anymore. We need one in 50 because it can do most of the work and simply be reviewed or will be able to shortly. Um, that said, when you look at, look at uh, ChatGPT, which is doing so much heavy lifting for you and I, yes, right, it can write the. Uh, imagine what I might do in life. I might need to have this podcast, so I might consult ChatGPT with questions that I might need to ask, answers, ways that I might answer, and then I can use that for all of my brainstorming, and then simply refine it. That'd be an amazing time savings, right? Yes. So, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing no, no. right now. Do you, do you want a more specific answer? Should no, I, go? <laughs> I like, I like where you're going. Like you are just showing how AI mm. is used currently in the workplace. And yes, let's be clear. It will replace a lot of jobs, mm -hmm. but I would like to stress a little bit, or if you can talk a little bit about what's my role as an employee to mm. protect myself from AI replacing my job. Yeah, well, look at what, what you can do right now. Familiarize with yourself with AI so that you can use it yourself. Many employees employers aren't aware of just what you can do as an employee. What are you being asked to do with your time? For planning, for sending out emails? Um, so we can use these generative AIs to, to save time with some of those. But there are other companies, there are things like, uh, what's an example? Zapier for automating workflows, right? Mm -hmm. So if your company is involved in that, you need to help it ramp up and, and simplify. For your own sanity and for your own processes, you can start taking that on. And now if your, your boss recognizes your value, perhaps this is a way you can get additional training. What if that job disappears because you set up such a wonderful uh, set of workflows? Well, that could lead to a contracting position for you where you can help other companies doing that. Leverage your current work to get what you want out of it. Many bosses, I mean, they're just people trying to get things done. How do you help them get something done? Suggest to them something that's mutually beneficial. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so basically is... Instead of staying away from AI, trying to fear it, just jump into this train, develop the skills needed in order to be the one who is leading AI instead of allowing it as a tool to lead you. I think the so. More, the more familiar you are into the AI and technological advances, the more valuable you get to the in the workplace. Yeah, and... I mean, we can talk about ways that you can make this fun for yourself too. Some of us get a little bit scared at learning something new. I know I'm one of those people. If it's if you know if it's totally unknown and it seems like a daunting task, I'm you know climbing a mountain. But but pick up a piece. I mean, if if anyone who's listening that hasn't gone over and checked out Gemini or ChatGPT or one of these other generative AIs, go to it. Type in here's what I do. Here's who I am. How can I use you to help myself? Just look at what comes up, then ask it more specific questions. This is a great way to wade in and have some fun. I actually, on the personal side, I was asking it, I told it to, I'm enamored with a type of um, uh, a type of therapy, talk therapy called motivational interviewing. It has incredible benefits with how we can help other people change their minds. Helps people with like addiction, for instance. And I told one of these models to act as a therapist for me, right? And then I just spoke at it. And it guided me through a process of how a therapist might ask me questions, right? There's a lot out there. The answers are there. It used to be that people with the answers were the ones with gold. You no longer need to have the answers. This is incredible for you, for me, for us. 
we need to craft better questions. It's 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 now this the period of asking the right questions instead of right. finding the answers. Uh, if if you look at leadership in general, and you know leaders don't know everything, and basically many times they don't know anything. They hire employees who know stuff, and they just guide them how to use those those tools or those resources those employees have. And I see ChatGPT at the same place. ChatGPT has a lot of answers, but it's your your role as a leader to grow this skill in order to be able to focus those answers that ChatGPT have through the right questions, the right prompts, in order to formulate the results that you want to achieve for your work, for emails, maybe in my case, proposal writings or anything else, even coaching. Uh, I, I The same way I've tried to coach myself using AI by stating the problem and asking the questions. But can ChatGPT replace, co- replace coaches? I would say no, because after I tried it out, I felt there's a lot of technical insights that ChatGPT can give us, but there is no this, there isn't this a human insights where where when I'm coached by someone by human, they can sense my tone of voice, they can sense my body language and formulate the questions to get right. deeper and deeper. So. Yes, ChatGPT can replace a lot of coaches, but those coaches who are advancing in their career and growing to a level of certain exceptional service, ChatGPT can't replace them. Mm. I think that's very, very true. Uh, with this with this therapist bot <laughs> that I created, I was not quite getting all the answers I wanted. It was a great starting point, though. And I think that that's maybe where all of us should start. Don't rely on it universally for everything, but use it to help you educate yourself, to come up with brainstorming ideas. I need to create a presentation, give it specifics, even ask it, you know, I need I need a presentation. It has to have these specifics. Ask me other questions that will help you create a better presentation. You can It can help plan, but don't take it one for one. That's only getting you 70% of the way there, yeah. right? So I, I think you're right. The, the, the big... There are a few things that that AI is not quite going to yet. We don't have the robotics yet for it. So if you want to be a plumber, your job's currently pretty safe, safe right? Yeah. <laughs> and then this relationship work, what you do, Delita, it can't figure out how to ask. It is going to take the words to heart, but it cannot dissect meanings very well. How I say something, God, oh, I'm fine, right? Like it's going to say, oh, you're fine. That's good to hear. Right. You, Delita, are going to say, you know, I'm I'm clearly yeah, getting not- you're not fine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So. Oh, yeah, that that's that's so interesting. The the fear that people have isn't because AI is exists right now, but anyone else can take your job if you didn't grow your skills enough to protect it. It's about continuous growth. John Maxwell says the normal trajectory of life is downhill. If you didn't grow and improve and advance, you will end up, your skills, your health, everything will go backward and it will lead to a point where it doesn't exist anymore because life is changing and you have to change on a continuous basis. When I started to use AI, I had this feeling about the imposter feeling, and I'm sure many people start feeling this way. This is not my email. Some it's, it's written by someone else. And how can I have the claim that no, it's my email. This is not my proposal. I, I helped me write this proposal. So this creates, because we are used to do everything ourselves, And this is when we feel the sense of achievement. Oh, I wrote this. I responded this way. Um, now, AI is helping. And as good as we are a human and as, as good we are to criti- criticize ourselves and put ourselves down, I've heard it from several people and from myself. Like, 
this this imposter like no it's not my work i'm cheating in a way mm. so what's your idea about this i think if someone told me that they felt they weren't doing the work because they picked up a a drill right to drill into the wall because they weren't actually drill look the drills automatic am i really drilling you're still guiding you're doing a little bit less of the design but you're still guiding where the ai is going and what it is working on you're using it for extra leverage i feel like that's the appropriate response there i get the the imposter syndrome though i think some of that is you know again it's going to be naturally true but just think that some of this work that you've been spending so much of your time on, help it craft a good message. And in some cases, you're still going to be writing the message yourself. It's important enough and it can't do it. But yeah, for a business proposal, let it help you. And then move on to the things that it can't do for you. The other types of work, the other, the relationship work or, or whatever, wh whatever cases that may be. I, I, I love this example and I agree. It took me time to adjust because our mindset, it takes time to set this mindset of what's familiar and what's new. And once we have to accept that we have to do this jump, we have to change as the world is changing. It, it, it took me to the different mindset. No, it's a tool that's empowering me. And if I didn't use AI, the things I've been doing in one hour, two hours would take weeks fr from me. Do I have this time to invest? Right now, life is busy. Whether school assignments, whether proposals, whether anything that is, is done, there is more demands. There is no time availability to cover those demands if we didn't get help. And just like any other businessman who uses their assistant, uses their uh, their employees to help them do them some stuff. Us right. as business owners also are using this tool, AI, to save us some time and sort things. But the work won't be at the level of excellence that it is if we didn't put our input. At the end, it's, mm. it's what we have to hold the drill. I love this example. We have to hold the drill. It doesn't do it by itself. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a great point. You know, what you what you just said about having time available. I apologize, by the way. I make notes when I talk. So I'm looking over and it probably looks like I'm one of those jerks who's like answering messages. I promise I'm not. I'm so not this is jerk. okay. Okay. <laughs> but um I think something that came up to me that maybe you can help people with is my big struggle is taking out bites of time to actually learn appropriately. I will get lost in a learning cascade where I'll disappear for five hours trying to fix the process. And then I come back up and luckily I had those, those hours to do it. And the rest of the time I'm busy and I'm barely going to put any time in. And so maybe this is like a, a great question to ask you for anyone that really wants to start learning a thing. How do we better piecemeal learn? How do I get in and only learn for 30 minutes? How do I prioritize that? Right? No, this goes to time management. Honestly, I, I'm i guilty about this too. When I'm ma passionate about a certain topic, I I can't stop myself from like learning, learning, learning. And at the end, I feel this overwhelmed. Like I want to know more. I want to be there at this level of expertise yesterday. And this comes from passion. And this is something positive. But no matter what way you are learning, whether you're investing a lot of time or whether or not, what matters is using those learnings. Mm -hmm. Many times and many courses we signed up into, we started learning, we invested a lot of time, but we went back to our old habits. We don't we don't use this learning effectively. And I think this, this is one of really performance issues. We don't you apply what we've been learning. Time management skills is a big thing. We, If you don't have this time 
to invest in learning, set the right priorities, manage your priorities correctly. And no, I have only this time to be working on this thing by uh, setting up calendar blocks, by having accountability with someone else. If you don't have this ability to stop yourself, this addiction, like, no, I want to complete what I need to complete. Let yeah. someone else be supporting you in this. Like, you know what? Stop me in an, in 30 minutes. This is all what can I invest, what I can invest in this, this uh, schedule. Time blocks are really important when I want to get involved in something that I know I can't stop. Usually I schedule a meeting afterwards so I don't be dragged with time. So let's mm -hmm. say I know I'm meeting you at 12. I start whatever I need to work 30 minutes before. This way, I know I have 30 minutes time span. I can't ov go over 30 minutes because I have this commitment with you. Hmm. If you don't have this internal di discipline to do something, you have to find external tools to keep you on track. So you're saying, I, I like what you said there about both uh, the, the time management, the time blocks. I'm getting better at it, but... For our last conversation, this is something I was really struggling with, um, but uh, have not have not perfected that art yet. I do have a lot of time box in place to keep meetings from being put, booked when it's inappropriate. I just don't always obey them as much as I should. I really like the idea of accountability, though. And this is something that's often lacking and really helps me. Honestly, having brought my wife and I working on on our insurance business it is much easier for me to go chat with her and say, Hey, here's what's happening. And, you know, like I have to be accountable to, to accomplishing a goal during a certain time for her. So uh, I, I imagine you would say, get a coach for that to keep, to keep accountable for yourself if you're working alone. Right. Is that, is that the answer? Yes. It can be an accountability. Uh, I can't help you with that. I have <laughs> <laughs> this is when jobs can be replaced. So there is this personal touch. But yeah, you can, there is actually AI can help you in a certain way. There is also AI calendar programs where mm. they can sort the schedule for you. So if you want to learn, if you want to have interviews, if you want to do calls, you just put whatever you want to do and it will sort it out for you in a time table time blocks so that okay you don't have time for this in the afternoon you can squeeze it in the morning and vice versa it can be automated this way mm. perfect yep so just to respect your time and to respect my time we are almost uh, done thank you so much for your insights a lot of helpful information uh, do you have any any comment any question Gosh, well, to anyone listening, mm -hmm. uh, if you need help with uh, accountability and time management, reach out to Delita. <laughs> and what can they reach out to you for? How can you help? Yeah, if anyone has any questions about about healthcare, uh, happy to answer those or refer you to the right the right group. As far as Opolis goes, we help self employed folks. So if you're going at it alone and you think you might need some help we're here for you. We're designed as a cooperative to make sure we're, we're not all at it alone. And in whatever capacity, I hope everyone finds good accountability partners and resources to help them because I think as humans, we're not meant to be alone. We need help. I love this. We are really involved in technology thinking we can do it by ourselves. But even with all the tools available, all the technology, all the things that are going on right now, we need each other even more. Mm. We need the support. We need this relationship uh, connection. Uh, nothing replaces human work, work together. Nothing replaces the advancement that we can do when we are two, three minds working together. Uh, John Maxwell says one is a very small number to achieve big things. And if you want to go big, connect more with people who can add value to your life and can help you. This, this would make big difference in your career. Thank you so much, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure as usual and looking forward for more and more discussions with you.
Absolutely. Anytime. Always a pleasure, Lena. Thank you.